Hello YouTube, my name is John and this is the Mask Face Journal and this is what I read this week. Titans number one, written by Dan Abnett and art by Brett Booth. The first half is kind of recapping and retelling the new status quo. It's further along from the rebirth issue, but it's still kind of just set up, which is to be expected. It, it drones along a little bit. It's a few characters that I'm not overly familiar with. I, I'm not a big Teen Titans reader, but I am a big Wally West Flash guy, so that's why I'm on this book. Which is good for me, because this book really deals with a lot of Wally West stuff. They're talking a lot about Linda Park, his wife, before the New 52 happened and uh, how she doesn't remember and it actually cuts and shows what she's doing right now. Then the last part of the issue is where things really gets interesting. I'm not going to spoil what it is but it is the return of a character that has not been seen for quite some time and I'm actually, actually really excited. I'm not a big fan of the art. It's the guy who did Flash before and wasn't great. It was a, a big step down from having Francis Manipul in the book. Anyway, like I said, this book deals with a lot of Rebirth stuff, a lot of Wally West stuff, and yeah, uh, I'm gonna keep on reading for a while. Batgirl number one, written by Hope Larson and art by Raphael Albuquerque. This is starting out with a new creative team for this book and starting out with a new life for Barbara. She is going to Japan for uh, some reason. She meets up with an old childhood friend from Chicago and she seems to be on a hunt for a bat-themed vigilante woman that was active during the 1930s. This issue is mostly her going out on having fun with her friend, her guy friend, who... Um, seems to be involved with something because she, they get attacked by some sort of schoolgirl themed vigilante. Barbara seems to be on a quest to better herself and better her fighting skills. I have said before that I didn't read the previous run on Batgirl because I didn't think it was for me, but I've always enjoyed the art in that book. This art is also pretty good, but I should have said last week in my recap of Batgirl and the Birds of Prey, I don't think this Batgirl costume really works outside of that particular art style. It works a little better here than it did in Birds of Prey, but it's still not great. I think this book will be a decent jumping on point if you haven't been reading this title before. It set up some interesting things and I'm gonna give the next few issues a go. Wonder Woman number three, written by Greg Ruck and art by Liam Sharp. This is the lie part of the story, so Wonder Woman doesn't know what part of her origin is true or not, and she can't find her way back to Themyscira and she can't find her way to Olympus. So she has seeking out Cheetah to help her in her quest. There is some fighty fighty things, because this is a superhero book and this is what happens in superhero books. There is a, another subplot with Steve Trevor leading a military unit in the same country as Wonder Woman currently is in with Cheetah. We don't seem to know what their mission really is, but they come across some sort of unnatural jungle that don't show up on satellite photos or drone surveillance. I don't know why, but this issue makes my brain hum the theme song from the 70s Wonder Woman TV show. Not because it's any way light-hearted, but perhaps because of Wonder Woman's attitude. It's very fight a war with love, make a liar tell the truth kind of attitude. The art is decent, not as good as the last issue by, by Nicholas Scott, but not at all bad. The design of Cheetah kind of creeps me out, I'm used to her looking like Tigra from Marvel but with spot instead of stripes, but here she looks kind of like a vampire from Buffy covered in fur. Harley Quinn number 30, written by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti and art by Elsa Charitier. I'm sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. This issue is really odd in that it is a one-shot story that kinda says goodbye to this book as it relaunches with a new number one after this. But it's going to have the same writing team after the relaunch. There's not much to discuss here, it's just a zany little self-contained adventure with some cartoony and very fitting art, so I'm instead going to talk about Harley Quinn as a whole. This incarnation of the character is, shall we say, divisive. Some hate her, some love her. Both camps think that the other side are idiots. 
My take, I both like this version of Harley and seriously miss the old version. This character is not really very similar to the old version, but that doesn't mean that this version isn't also good. What bothers me the most is how this series works with the rest of DC, as she's written a lot different in Suicide Squad, and at least twice now Batman has claimed to be keeping an eye on her, yet she kills a lot of people in almost every issue. Like I said, I like this Harley, I don't want her to go away, but I also want the old one back, so if we can have two Wally Wests and three Jokers, can we have two Harleys? The Flash, number three, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Carmine D. Giandomencio. This issue deals with the aftermath of the lightning storm that last issue gave a bunch of random people in Central City Speed Force powers. Star Labs has set up a facility to help these new speedsters to control their new abilities. It also keeps the Flash busy since some of these people are using their powers to rob banks and such. I'm not sure about this trend of making bad guys for the Flash other speedsters. I know I'm counting in the TV show with this, but it used to be pretty rare to have speed villains in Flash stories. There were a few to be sure, Savitar, Zoom, but now it feels like it's all there is. It's a bit weird saying this as we come almost immediately from my rogue story, but can we please have a rogue story? That story was basically the fallout from the Professor Zoom arc and it wasn't really even about the rogues. The art is kind of growing on me nowadays, but it's some weird inconsistency with the, all the new speedsters running around because some have lightning and some doesn't. And I don't know if it's on purpose or not, if that is trying to tell us something. Also, there is the new villain introduced. I'm not going to say who it is. If you read any previews, you know about this new villain. You don't know the identity of the villain, but you know about the villain. That's all I'm gonna say. Detective Comics, issue 937, written by James Tiny on the 4th and art by Alvaro Martinez. This series is moving pretty fast so far. This issue deals with what this organization that has modeled itself on Batman actually is and how they operate. This issue focuses more on Batman than the previous ones in the story, which is welcome, but also a bit weird, since this story most definitely is more tied to Batwoman and is very personal for her. I don't want to go into details, the reveal happened last issue, but it's such a major one that I don't want to spoil it for anyone. That is if you've been reading Batwoman. Otherwise, this probably means nothing to you. The art continues to be very good and very fitting for a Batman book. Action Comics, number 960, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Tyler Kirkham. This issue continues the slugfest against Doomsday. This is the third issue with pretty much non-stop fighting. We're almost reaching Dragon Ball Z territory with drawing out a fight. The characters are asking questions about the same things that we have wondered about for four issues now and we're still not getting any answers. We still don't know who this Clark Kent is, we still don't know who Mr. Oz is and why he's doing what he's doing. Despite this, I like this issue. There are some good character moments in here and there are some things about Doomsday that might be quite different from before. Wonder Woman makes an interest in this issue and I think she's handled mostly well, although the scene with her and Lois was a little too quick and to the point to be believable. I feel the art has improved this issue, the faces don't bother me anymore. Okay, that was what I read this week, quite a few comics this week. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe and share this video with all your friends. Please share, all, all your friends. If you didn't like it, please let me know in the comments and share it with all your friends, because why not? You can give me hate views. I, I don't mind hate views. Anyway, I'm done for this week. Bye.